the uh, pinnacle. It's a bit cool for snakes. I can't imagine they're out now. Could potentially even be the reason why that uh, animal, you know, the, whatever it was, regurgitated that food. So these marla. It's a bit cool in the wild. They're very lucky to be able to see them. Hopefully she turns around. She's got a pouch on her head sticking out. Um, very lucky to see them. Cats and foxes, bushfires really did a number on them. There he is. Hello, little one. Cats and foxes really did a number on them, and also the changes in, in the way the land burnt. So, uh, at one stage, there was about 27, or there was 27 in existence, all living here. 27? Yeah, and all living here in what? Before the desert park was a thing, yes. basically a mile of breeding facility. There he is. Hello. Oh, he's a shot. That's the way. Oh, look at the little one. Oh. So we've got the little one in there. He's starting to get pretty big. Yes. You can see he's actually got a, got a foot sticking out yes. as well as his head. <laughs> um, that shows just how much. Oh. Basically, when they're really young, they're almost just all feet. feet. Um, <laughs> it's sort of one of the first things to grow. Um, oh. And you want to turn around. Okay. You might turn around a little bit. Look. But so this young one will be out of the pouch pretty soon, I imagine. Um, sort of no more than two weeks. Um, probably a lot sooner than that. Look a bit full though. So on this side of his yes. face, I can see a foot sticking out. Yes, I can see it too. Yeah. yeah. So that's <laughs> that, that, that sort of shows you how how cramped it's he's starting to get in there. Um, so he's probably I'm sure well he's only found here. Um, but yeah, Billy's are the biggest bandicoots. Um, so you can see similarities there. Um, the main similarity between them Ooh. is the way they move. Mm. Bilbies and bandicoots move kind of weird. They've got the front two paws go independent like us or dogs. The back two go together like a kangaroo's. Um, so it gives them a really weird looking gait to them. Yeah. So the face is, um, that snout's packed with very sharp teeth. Um, so they are very omnivorous, so like that other bandicoot, eats everything they can get their mouths onto. Uh, because they're larger, they've got a bit more range of food they can get. So they'll, um, for example, in here we typically don't really get too many feral mice. It doesn't get out of control. So we've got things like bilbies in here that'll hunt them. Mm -hmm. um, these bandicoots, when they're young, have to watch out for bilbies. You see this fellow, it's probably about half the size, it's probably about double the size he would have been when he first left the pouch. He would have been, he got rid of the curlews, and we haven't seen them since. Um, that curlew at Nature Theatre, their lineage is actually a part of the lineage of the wild curlew, uh, curlews that were on park, um, which is really cool. So, yeah, bilbies have also got a pretty solid noggin about them. Like, that forehead there is pretty tough. I don't know if there's an actual evolutionary reason for having that. Highly likely it's just what happens when you live in a burrow, just bump your head all the time. Um, they will use their heads though to push material uh, material around and all that kind of thing. That is um, land clearance, uh, also things like um, bushfires uh, uh, and sort of unfortunate encounters with people. What they actually do is sort of press themselves up against things when they feel threatened and stick their um, spine straight out. So he's sort of like, yeah, he's trying to navigate and then sinks back down. And the Marla just comes straight on back. <laughs> um, so, and then sinks themselves straight down. They look around, see if it's all right. Sink themselves straight down. If they're being, if they were being attacked, are the bugs yeah. out? So there's the snout there. Yeah. yeah. So she's going to probably wander maybe that way because there's food over there for them. But you're just going to annoy. Oh. Well. <laughs> well. So this one's actually a, probably the youngest echidna in here because I can tell because it's the smallest one. Each teat will be basically a different tap to milk. Um, so he'll have his own teat that he goes to and he'll go back to that one every time. At one point, his mouth was completely fused to that teat. Um, and so he'll know exactly which one to go to and he'll be just sculling on down. He's actually very lucky and very surprised. So yeah, he's only going to be a couple, he's only a couple of days out of that yeah, pouch. He could feed off, he would feed off. Exactly. Him. So that young one that's that we saw in the pouch just up the path there is probably not going to be much smaller than this guy. Oh, okay. 